Welcome to our session today. I am your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. So in our class today, it is a continuation of what we've been doing earlier on. Recall, in the previous class, we introduced inventory. And on that case, we had uh, talked about the inventory cost, which I believe we had mentioned things to do with holding cost, ordering cost, shortage cost, and also the aspect of purchase cost. So in our class today, it's still a continuation of that. So today we are going to look at uh, inventory control at a whole different level because we'll be talking about inventory control uh, that is under stochastic models. And in this case, we'll be looking at inventory control under uncertainty. Because many a times, if you compare what uh, we were doing earlier on, we went uh, and basically when you are looking at uh, the concept of uh, EUQ, you know there are some of the elements ideally they are known in advance. But in practice, you'll find that uh, this is a whole different thing. You'll find that we won't be aware of what is happening in our environment. So that's why inventory control and a stochastic model is very key for us as students of management accounting to understand it clearly, to understand, to understand that concept very, very clearly. So uh, maybe we normally tend to say that uh, inventory control involves a number of factors which cannot be predicted in advance accurately. One of the assumptions under basic deterministic model is a certainty in demand and lead time. In real, in real practice, these two variables cannot be constant. And if these two items are not constant, then there is possibility of stock out. Mark that very well, because you normally tend to assume that uh, ideally these items are constant. Basically, whenever we're talking of uh, probably demand and lead time, you normally tend to assume that demand and uh, lead time, you normally tend to assume that demand and lead time are always constant. But in practice, you'll find that uh, these two components, ideally, they are not constant. And in such cases, you'll find that if I cannot predict our demand accurately, and even when we are talking of lead time, that duration of waiting, that the waiting period before our goods probably comes to the premises, you'll find that having these two factors, it is going to bring an issue of what? It is going to bring an issue to do with the concept of what? To do the concept of stock out. And this is where I want us now to talk more about inventory control under uncertainty. So we normally tend to say that uh, there are two models which are used where the stockouts are expected to arise. There are two methods which are used where stockouts are expected to arise. So looking at these two methods, my good students, looking at the two methods, you are seeing there are two methods which are expected. Uh, there are two methods which are normally used when we expect a stock out to arise. And these two models or these two methods are, number one, we normally term it as permitted stock out model. Permitted. Permitted stock out model. Permitted stock out model. And number two, we normally term it as a uh, talk of use of safety stock use of safety stock use of safety stock so we are saying that where we are expecting our stock out where we are expecting our stock out you'll find that i'll always be talking about these two models and that is the two methods we'll be talking of permitted stock out model and use of safety stock model so allow me to start with the first model, which you normally term it as permitted stockout model. So we start with the first model. Let us understand how this model works. Permitted stockout model. Permitted stockout model. Permitted stock out model, permitted stock out model, permitted stock out model. So you normally say that uh, this model is used where the stock out cost is uh, less than the holding cost. We are saying this model is used 
where the stockout cost is less than the holding cost. So you are seeing it is used where the stockout uh, stock of uh, cost is less than the holding cost. So you are seeing this method is used where the stockout cost, where the stockout cost is less than the holding cost. It's less than the holding cost. It's less than the holding cost. It's less than the holding cost. So you're seeing that uh, at any given point, if I was uh, to use a uh, permitted stockout, we are seeing that it's going to be used where stockout cost is less than is less than the holding cost. One of the key elements that you must always grasp. Again, we normally tend to say that uh, it also applies where the customers are willing to wait for the items to be delivered I, uh, in that uh, stock of, uh, we normally term it as a back order, right? Where maybe you're having your uh, talk of, uh, uh, maybe you really, really, really trust a certain supplier or you really believe in a certain supplier so that even in the event that uh, probably these items are not there, you'd be willing to wait. And many a times you'll find that in practice, this is kind of, uh, as much as the, it exists, but again, you'll find that uh, there are those suppliers, there are those suppliers or customers whom will tend to go to another supplier in the event that they have realized you don't have such commodities. And that's why I'm saying that it also applies where the customers are willing to wait for the items to be delivered. That is where this model will also be applied where the customers are willing or waiting, they are willing to wait for the items to be delivered. But in practice, you'll find that this is very rare, right? This is very, very rare because many a times you will find that uh, you will find that uh, many a times if I've come to your shop and probably don't have such an item and probably it's urgent, I won't wait you to deliver such items. Of course, I'm going to uh, purchase that item to the next uh, supplier. And that's why you'll find that, yes, as much as you'll be talking of this, it's not commonly applicable when you're talking of management accounting. That is number one method. What about number two? Number two, we are talking of use of safety stock. But B, we normally talk of a use of a safety stock. Use of a safety stock. Use of safety stock. A very important concept because many a times you'll find that in management accounting, mostly I'll be looking at the concept of the use of safety stock. So while talking of a use of safety stock, what should we understand? We normally tend to say that this model applies where the shortage cost is more than the holding cost. And the customers are not willing to wait for the orders to be delivered. So we are saying that at this point, it is normally used where the stockout cost is more than the holding cost. So we are saying that it is used where our stockout cost is more than the holding cost. Is more than the holding cost. Differentiate between the two under permitted. We mentioned that uh, it is used where the stockout cost is less than what? It's less than the holding cost. But when you are talking of uh, safety stock, you are saying stockout cost is more than the holding cost. And at this point, the customers, my good students, the customers are not willing to wait for the items to be for the items to be delivered. So uh, we normally also tend to say that uh, the model also considers the combination of the holding cost and the stockout cost, which is guaranteed, which will guarantee the minimum inventory cost. So at this model, you are saying we are always going to consider these two types of costs, the combination of holding cost and stockout cost. The combination is going to consider the combination of holding cost and stockout cost and stockout cost, which will guarantee, which will guarantee the minimum inventory cost, which will guarantee, which will guarantee the minimum, which will guarantee the minimum inventory cost, which will guarantee the minimum inventory cost, which will guarantee the minimum inventory cost, which will guarantee the minimum inventory cost. 
a very key element that you must always have at the back of at the back of your mind. So uh, to determine the optimal reorder level and safety stock, then the inventory cost. Ideally, at this point, whenever you're talking of inventory cost, you're talking of holding cost and shortage cost must be taken into, into account. We are saying that uh, to determine the optimal reorder level or safety stock, then the total inventory cost, then the total inventory cost, that is the holding cost and the shortage cost must be taken into account, must be taken into account. So basically, uh, when we'll be considering the use of safety stock, we are saying whenever I want to consider, whenever I want to determine our inventory cost, when I want to determine our inventory cost, we are going to take into consideration the concept of the shortage, the shortage or stockout cost or stockout cost and what? Number two, the holding cost and at this point remember holding cost we are talking of these are the holding cost of maintaining extra units this is the holding cost of maintaining the extra the extra units and this is what i want you to grasp it very correctly when you are talking of the holding cost at this point you are talking of the holding cost of maintaining extra units of maintaining extra of maintaining extra units of maintaining extra units so for us to use the safety stock it is very key to note some of the data requirements that we normally tend to use so we normally tend to use the following data requirement so the following data requirements are very key the following data requirement the following data requirements are very key whenever we are talking of what? Whenever we are talking of uh, the concept to do with safety stock. So the following data requirements are normally used. The following data requirements are normally used. The following data requirements are normally, are normally used. So we are saying that at this point, any time, any time we are talking, any time we are talking of uh, safety stock, we'll always consider the following data requirement. The first thing that we should always note is that we should first of all identify the stockout cost per unit. So number one element that we should have is the stockout cost per unit. That is number one element that you must consider. Number two component to consider is the annual number of orders. The annual number of orders. The annual number of orders. Uh -huh. Number three point to consider, we normally tend to talk of the reorder point. That is reorder point. Talk of reorder point. And of course, whenever you're talking of reorder point, it's the same as what? Our reorder level. Then also the other point to consider, we normally talk of uh, probability distribution of demand during lead time. Probability, probability distribution of demand during lead time, probability distribution of demand during lead time, probability distribution of demand during lead time. Uh -huh. The other component also to consider, we normally tend to talk of the holding cost per unit. The holding cost per unit. So these are the main elements that we normally tend to consider any time you are dealing with, any time you are dealing, any time you are dealing with stochastic models. So we normally tend to say that any time you are dealing with stochastic models, ideally, we normally tend to take out our stockout cost per unit, the annual number of orders, reorder point, probability distribution of demand during lead time, and talk of the holding cost per unit. 
So meaning that at the end of this class, my good student, what you should have understand is that whenever you're talking of inventory control and uncertainty, I'll always be talking of the two methods. That is permitted stock out model and use of safety, use of safety stock. We've clearly explained the permitted stock out model and also we went ahead and also explained number two, the use of safety stock. But using uh, use of safety stock, we've said that I'll always consider two main costs. I'll always consider two main costs. That is the shortage of stock out cost and the holding cost. And we've clearly said that the holding cost that you're talking about here is the holding cost of maintaining extra units. The holding cost of maintaining extra units. And we've said for us to consider safety stock, I'll always put these items into consideration. I must identify our stock out cost per unit. I must determine our annual number of orders. I must be able to point out our reorder point. That is, of course, the reorder level. Uh, talk of, uh, of course, uh, that is uh, the level of inventory without safety stock. In this case, we are talking of, uh, whenever you are talking of uh, this context, by the way, for you to understand, we are talking of, uh, talk of, uh, we normally tend to talk of uh, the level of inventory without safety stock. Level of inventory. This is a level of inventory, level of inventory without safety stock. Level of inventory without safety stock, level of inventory without safety stock. And uh, talk of a probability distribution of demand or lead time, then you are talking of the holding cost per, per unit. So these are the, some of the main key elements that you must always grasp any time we are dealing with any time you are dealing with any time you are dealing with the uh, inventory control and the uncertainty so for us to grasp and understand this concept very clearly i want you guys to join me in the next session whereby we are going to handle a question from our past paper this is advanced management accounting and also very key concept to students who are doing performance measurement that is under acca f5 so Thank you so much and uh, let us meet in the next session whereby we are going to handle a full question in relation to what the concept that we've just studied today. Thank you so much.